Okay, it looks like we're like Avatar, bro. What? I literally just hit the start sharing button, huh? Oh, 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 oh. Also, why does the chat look like this? Hold up. There we go. Weird. Okay, uh, music. We go. We move. Dang, you watching two pack openings at the same time? That's kind of crazy. There, how are you doing? Hopefully you're having a good time tonight. Hopefully work isn't being too stressful. I think it's almost like I need to be here. Okay, but like, I am almost never on time though. I was I was literally in Mr. F Fifarino's chat watching the uh watching his stream instead of uh really preparing for mine super well so if anything it's a miracle you're somewhat quiet by the way uh uh that may be because i'm just not facing the mic that's what i was about to say i, I think it's just because i turned away from the mic honestly i can bring it closer though probably do that might be a little better Oh, so, um, I mean, I guess this isn't too different from my normal setup, uh, that we had before. Uh, I'm having to use the worst webcam for the actual camera. When you look away from the camera, it sounds better. It sounds better. No way. I see that the gain's up a little bit. I could probably turn that down just a tad. Maybe. How does it look? How does it sound better when I look away from the camera? Anyways. So, um, yeah, new, uh, new place, kind of similar setup at the moment. Uh, old camera webcam is being used as the one for the stream. When you look down, like you just, uh, oh, well, that's because, yeah, my, my voice isn't carrying to, yeah, my voice isn't carrying as much to the uh, microphone. Man, I might can move it like a bit closer this way. Hold on. I hadn't heard anybody else mention this, so. Let's see if I can do this. I'm surprised that's actually not on the camera. So I think that might be a little better. I should have muted that. I'm sorry. You probably heard me dragging that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. No, I don't I don't think you have bad ears. I mean, I can just go back because since you mentioned it at the beginning of the VOD, that'll be good for me to kind of go look at. Um, but yeah, I have not heard anything about that. So at least thank you for bringing it up, just in case. Um, yeah, kind of worse webcam downgrade, at least for tonight. And then uh, good webcam is being used, which, you know, it's good, but could be better. Not professional. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop to it then. Uh, first off, we are starting with Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, since that tends to be the uh, less popular set to open for stream. But we are opening the 25th quarter century tens. Uh, this basically just has like a bunch of staples in it. And then the gimmick is, is that the promos of the 10 actually do have cards that are kind of like, you know, like the main characters, uh, ace monsters for each series. The ones that are like really popular. Yeah. 25th. Yeah. So it's a quarter century, the 25th, 25th anniversary. So that's what it is. Um, Oh no, that pack was like ready to just yeet on out. Okay, I guess I got my promo. I mean, I guess that's the equivalent of a promo on this. So in each 10, it comes with three packs. They look like this. Anniversary 10 Dueling Heroes Mega Packs. They come with 18 cards in them. They try and give you some good value. Uh, there's really nothing fancy in the 10. It's just like a regular 10 with an insert for the packs. So not like an ETB, you got like a bunch of fancy stuff in it. 
but each one does come with a single promo, I believe in the quarter century foil. Um, it's very sparkly and I've got it right here. So let's go ahead and see what we got for our first 10. I do have two of these, so we'll, we'll have a chance to pull at least one more. It's a Decode Talker. Uh, so this is the ace monster from Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains. Uh, I actually do not dislike uh, the Code Talkers at all. I just think that, unfortunately, Decode Talker is probably the least played of all of them, despite being the ace monster. <laughs> so, uh, interesting pool, but I think that there are probably other ones in here that I would have preferred less. But yeah, it's... Um, I guess it's really not that easy to see through the plastic, but you can see how there's like a little sheen on the card when I move it. There's like definitely some extra sparkles to it. The light is kind of hard to hit, but yeah, see how like this is like really shining right there. Okay, that, that angle seems to probably be best for it, so. But, um,. So we'll go ahead and actually get into the packs. I do not have my squishable guys. I actually have no idea where they are because they're just in boxes somewhere. So we'll the, we'll give we'll give them a, a, a squish, in uh, out of respect, and maybe they'll return one day. You would think that'd be like my main priority to to know where those are since I actually do use them for stream, but uh, no. They are uh, currently lost in the sauce, and by sauce, I mean the boxes that we have. Um, and to say kind of what I would like from pulling these packs, uh, there is the man, there's a bunch of reprints in here. So the tens at the end of the year are typically safe for reprints, and the two archetypes that I would like the most to get some pulls out of um, is Dino Morphia and labyrinth um i'm not really sure like if i'd super invest in getting those decks finished even if i pull some good stuff because nobody wants to play Yu-Gi-Oh with me but um i still think that it'd be cool to have both of those decks built and i already have works in progress for both of them so we'll see first off we start with tobari the sky ninja Dino Morbia, yeah, they do be Morbin. Chris, how's it going? This is actually hard to hold because of all the cards in this one stack. <laughs> we have Double Dust Tornado Twins. Oh my god, what? A more Factor Pain, the Imagination Draco... Draco Overlord. That, that sure is Yu-Gi-Oh. DD Griffin. Kagro the Cannon Ninja. She's a cutie. Scarecaw Splash. That, it, that I did say that right. It is Splash. I was like, what what did I just say? <laughs> Branded Beast. I'm not even sure that I've seen this card. This may have been in a set that I didn't um May have been in a set that I didn't really pull from. We got a hollow doll monster bear bear. <laughs> Just a little guy. I think his uh, archetype is a box of friends, I think. Might be right. Also, yes, Chris. She she do. Wandering Griffin Rider. Okay, that's a pretty good staple. Griffin Rider is an extremely good uh, card to... Uh, slot in if you're running the adventure package and uh he is very annoying but very good so you know what all things considered we take those blackwing bora yeah bore storm the wicked wind another ultra right of our masir secret so that is the card that you need <laughs> for um that is the card that you actually do need for adventure because it basically allows you to search into this one card called fateful adventure i know you can't read it 
But you search into Fateful Adventure, which basically allows you to set up the rest of your board. So this is like a one card combo here. It's a, it's a very good card. Behind that, we have Castor Unicorn, another good card. Jeez, okay. I think right now the uh, most expensive card uh, just from the packs is... Uh, what is it? Castura, um... Well, I can't remember his name. Isn't it named after, like, another thing? Fenrir, yeah. But Unicorn is still very good. Very important to the Castura engine. And then after that, we got Stalit Papillon. I think we're back into the commons. Scareclaw Twin Saw. Labyrinth Archfiend, a Labyrinth card, but unfortunately I have a billion of these. Libromancer Doom Broker. I think this is a common printing and the one that I have is uh, a secret. I think that's right. Amphibious Burgroth Mark II. Libromancer Mystigirl. And I believe that's it. Yep. I probably need to set aside the pulls that started from Hollow. There we go. Well, no, yeah, I'll I'll start from Hollow. The rare I really don't think is gonna <laughs> is gonna have anything that's super of note. And yeah, since I uh I've changed all my mic settings and stuff, you can actually get like the pack ASMR a little bit here. All right, next pack we are starting with. Scareclaw Acro. Yeah, this is like just a slight bit lower than I'm normally used to, but we're making it work. Ice Jade Erosion. Black Wing Twin Shadow. Labyrinth Ku Clock, another common, so nothing super exciting there. Libromancer Magigirl. Farewell Labyrinth, another Labyrinth card that I have a billion of. <laughs> Yo, uh, I believe it's Hink1337420. Oh, is it Leap420? That makes sense. Yo, I do appreciate that follow, man. Hopefully you enjoy the stream. We're just doing some chill pack openings tonight. Probably won't last too awful long, but uh, we're just through... Our second pack of a 20th, 25th anniversary tin. And we've got one more. So hopefully uh, stick around to see what we get. Uh, we have Branded Loss. Another branded card is our rare. Sales Ban. Isn't that like a card that like a, a weird tech card that some people side? I almost feel like it. Scareclaw Arrival. Ice Jade, uh, Cosmoclore. I think I pulled like, uh, I feel like I pulled like three of these as my secrets from Power of the Elements. I think that's right. <laughs> it is kind of rough luck, especially compared to all of the other big hits that you could get in that set. Uh, first secret is Black Winged Assault Dragon. Ooh, second secret is Muckraker from the Underworld. That's actually a pretty good card. Uh, and I believe people do run it in Labyrinth. So that is not a bad card to pull. Yeah, thank you. Evil uh, Mojito. I think that's what it is. Uh, if like I, I, I pretend the one is an I. Uh, really appreciate you coming by. Hopefully you enjoy the stream. Again, we're just doing some chill pack openings tonight. Uh, starting on our first 25th anniversary 10 into the second pack. Uh, both secrets, honestly, not too bad, uh, especially Muckraker. I feel like that's a pretty good one. We're back to the commons. So we got Amazonus Silver Swordmaster. Scareclaw Alternative. DDD Rebel King Leonidas. Melfi Staring Contest, that little guy. Little dude, little boy. 
and a proper gandake. Oh, that was the last card. Ichiroku's ledger book. Apparently, he's got Luster Dragon in there for some reason. Weird. Yo, Josh, how's it going? Oh, hopefully, you're doing all right. Okay. Uh, hey, Kale or Kale, 850. Appreciate the follow. Hopefully, you're doing all right. I'm sorry. Are these? <laughs> I really don't mean to be insulting. I hope these aren't bots. <laughs> But I hope everybody's still having a good night tonight. Um, and, you know, just stick around for the packs uh, again, starting with Yu-Gi-Oh! and moving on to Pokemon in just a little bit. This is this definitely, like, the first time in a while that I have gotten, like, any follows just, like, back to back to back to back to back. I really do not mean it as an insult. I am just very, very surprised. I'm not a bot, I promise. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I really do hope everybody's having a good night so far. Again, we're just big chillin'. Is that alright, the first one? Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So is there anything uh, from these sets that like people are excited to see? I know at this point they're kind of old news, right? Because uh, especially for Pokemon, Paradox Rift came out. And uh, for the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, I believe it's this. Is it this weekend that the... Rarity collection comes out. Which I definitely am going to want a good bit of that. That's so good. Full of Fenrir, yes. Blue Eyes White Dragon. So Blue Eyes, uh, I think the quarter century is a promo. Uh, I do have one more ton. So there is actually a chance that I will pull one. Uh, getting into our last pack of the first 10, we have uh, Supreme Sea Mare. Literally, I've never seen this card before, but I mean, you could say that for a bunch of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Underworld Ritual of Prediction. What does this ritual summon? Oh, Prediction Princess. Right, that is an archetype. The Exodia. Oh, true. The Exodia is also a part of it. Some of them classic cards. So for our first one, I'll uh, interrupt myself just really quick. The first one, we got a uh, quarter century decode talker. Um, I actually don't dislike decode talker i think that the archetype for the code talkers is super cool and i would like to build a deck around it one day um i just know that that is like one of the least played of all the code talkers so it's shrug <laughs> still a cool card though there's legendary egyptian cards in it as well so if you wanted the egyptian cards i think you would have had to buy the um there was like a reprint of the egyptian god cards um set and i can't remember exactly what the name of it was i don't believe any of the egyptian god cards are a part of this set you can get them in a different one though uh libermancer displaced uh chris i know in the chat is actually very familiar with most of the Yu-Gi-Oh sets so he might know off the top of his head baku the beast ninja melfi penny oh the melfies these guys are so heckin' adorable. Way more adorable than they need to be. Libromancer Prevented. Uh, first is Katarin, the hidden gem of the seafront. Just a little, little guy, a little dude. Are you into Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon 2? So I do both. Um, basically, every single stream I do, I usually try to start with Yu-Gi-Oh! and then end with Pokemon. So I do have a single ETB of Pokemon, uh, Scarlet and Violet 151, that I will be opening. So we'll see. God cards came in the box at the 25th anniversary and Legend of Blue Eyes and the like. Yeah, I think it came with like a couple like random vintage packs. It came with a set of the... Um, it came with a set of the god cards, and then it came with one card that was a quarter century rare. And I think it was either the three Egyptian god cards, Dark Magician, Red Eyes, Blue Eyes, and Sa and another boss ace monster that I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah. What's my favorite legendary Pokemon? Uh, if we're if I can cheat and say mythical Pokemon, it's definitely Jirachi. Uh, if we're strictly uh, if we're sticking strictly to actual legendary Pokemon, probably. Uh, I mean, because I'm a Gen 3 nerd, Rayquaza is really high up on my list. I really, really do like him. And I am, like, 
I know that it was a b- bad news for everybody else that Rayquaza got a Mega Evolution, but I thought that was super cool too. So we got Naturia Camellia. That's our first hollow. Runic Allure. I have a billion of these. I don't know the difference, but my favorite is Rayquaza. Oh, yo, same, same, same. Uh, the only difference is that uh, Jirachi cons- is considered a mythical because you can't get them under normal means. Um, like, you can't play through Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald or Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and get Jirachi. You usually have to get it through some sort of event that's tied to it, like a mystery gift. That, I feel like that's how most mythical Pokemon are kind of categorized. Okay, there we go. Another Dynam- Dynamorphia. That's good for me. Dynamorphia uh, Stealth Burgia. I don't think that they really play this one that much, but hey, I'll pick it. I always play off like the beaten path for a lot of decks because I try and build strictly around the archetype as much as I can. Lovely Labyrinth of the Silver Castle. We got our very pretty lady. Liter- literal lady. Um... And I believe you only need her as a one of. So that's all I need for my Labyrinth deck when I build it. So very, very nice. I do uh, do really like that. And then we have a Scareclaw Reichhart. I I guess I should know about this card because Scareclaw is like a pretty like meaningful archetype. But I do uh, do not recognize this card at all. <laughs> maybe Maybe it's not good and it's not played. <laughs> We have Scareclaw Straddle, Noble Knight Custinen, Archfiend's Ghastly Glitch. Definitely have a bunch of those too. Infernal Queen Salmon, yo. Josh, this is a, one of the um, this is like one of the cards that I think that would have fit for your fish deck, since I know you were wanting to build like a, a go team. I think that this one was uh, not too bad for it. But um, uh, we, we would definitely have to look at that, especially since Goaty's getting more like actual support. Like they're getting a new wave of monsters soon. Gem Knight Quartz. And Zombie Reborn. I believe that is the last card. Correct. Correct, Mundo. All right. We are going on into the next 10. Thankfully, I went ahead and opened these up from the uh, wrapping because those usually take just a tad bit. Oh, I was spoiled. It wasn't upside down. Rip. Usually, they try and leave it a surprise, but that one definitely was not. Oh, well, this is garbage. I guess I can throw this over here. I'm not trying to make as much noise as possible because I know that that's close to the mic. The new goatee card to read like custom ones. I have not read them at all, so I, I, I would have to take a look. So I'm sorry to disappoint. Um, this is not a Blue Eyes or Exodia. This is instead uh, Blackwing Armor Master. Uh, still a cool card, but I think I have one of the first printings of this card. And I think that the that, that printing goes for like $20 on its own. And he was, I'm almost certain he was just like a promo in a tin, so. But Armor Master is still actually a pretty good card. Um, I just don't really play Black Wings, so. Crow is really good. He probably is one of my favorite characters in 5Ds. If not my favorite character. I think I was asked that during uh, a Nightmare Tribadour stream, what my favorite 5Ds character was. I, I think I did say Crow. The nerd in me would have really liked something from the uh, from the GX era, like Cyber Dragon or Neos. I don't think Flame Wingman's actually uh, a quarter century rare you can get, but it's fine, I guess. All right. Oh, this pack is like it's too thick. I don't want many cards. There we go, jeez. Okay. Starting off this pack with a... Thunder Discharge. Mm. 
Willa, uh, Wallow, founder of Drudge Dragons. Isn't this like a kind of decent six star Xyz? I'll have to like read them over on my own time again. But I feel like I remember him being pretty good. Libromancer Displaced. I think we got this in uh, the second pack. Second pack of the last ten. Gem Knight Lady Rose Diamond. Ursa Radic. Or no, Ursa, Ur Ursa, uh, Ursa Arctic Radiation. Mary Melfi's. A couple of these too because of the set that it came out in. Joyous little guys. Just chillin'. Uh, my rare is Mazen the Battle Ninja. So this is part of the ninja archetype. I really haven't seen, like, a, I haven't read into a whole lot of the new cards that came out for this one, so. He looks pretty cool, though. Not gonna lie. Soul Scissors. That's my hollow. That's, uh... That's a, that one's a little weird, but all right. Samorg Bird of Perfection. Exosister uh, Caspatel. I do have a couple of the Exosister cards, but actually none of the Xyz, so this is my first Xyz for the archetype. Runic Fountain, uh, I believe that, yeah, that is a secret. <laughs> it's a little hard to tell, honestly. Runic Fountain Secret, the one card that uh, makes people very angry. Because <laughs> Runic completely revolves around it. Ooh, and Bestial Druus Worm, okay. Basically, like, most of the Bestials, I'm pretty sure, are decent pulls. Druus Worm is actually the second most expensive card on TCG Player right now. I just swapped over to that. I probably should just leave this tab open. So, all right. Um, maybe listing that soon. Because <laughs> I'm not going to use it. I, I don't use meta stuff at all. Radiation pretty much reads draw seven cards and it's still bad. Well, yeah, because of like if you can't do anything with the seven cards or it's like got a bunch of restrictions, then I mean, it's rough. You know what? I probably should sleeve that. Leave that and go ahead and put another top loader. Since I am actually taking consideration for a sale. And that was only the first pack of this, so I mean, there's still something I could pull out of it. I, I could still pull a Fenrir. Got it nice and protected. I didn't get a whole lot out, so... I may have to get more stuff when we open up 151, since there will probably be a hit or two in there. 151 is a pretty generous set when it comes to getting some good rares and like all arts and stuff like that. Moving on, the Bromancer Agent. We have Scareclaw Alternative. Ninjutsu Art of Dancing Leaves. Light Law Medium. Oh, that's a girl that's in that. I can barely tell what's going on. This art is kind of crazy. <laughs> Ninjutsu Art Tool Iron Digger. It's like a beetle whip or something. And Propagandake. I have... So many of these guys, I, please do not let me pull any more of these guys from these tens. I really do not want them. <laughs> he brings me pain. All right, next pack. Uh, like I said before, some of you who are familiar here, normally I would have some uh, squishy little guys. Uh, is uh, stressed out stress ball man and um, the man of many faces, which uh, they're literally just like stress balls. And I usually give them a good luck squeeze before the first pack and for the last pack magic. But we do not have him here because I have recently moved. I do not know where they are, so. Uh, 
We have X Exclusion. Is this like intended to be an X Saber card? Because it's so G. Oh yeah, because I think that's it's Mr. X Saber himself. Supreme Sea Mare. Got another one. Libromancer realized. They realize, realize the realize. Frostkeeper, a pretty decent card for um, elemental hero support and neo spatial support. Um, he's just really hard to slot in because if you draw into him without those cards, he's kind of a he's kind of a brick. But I mean, he gives you a draw too. So, Dynamorphia battle. I have more than enough of the traps because those were really easy to pull. Um, but you know what? Still take it. Maybe it means maybe it's a hint of things to come in this pack. Dragoonity Sinitus. Good old Dragoonity. Our rare is Han Shi Kudo Spirit. Who actually is a spirit card. A warrior pendulum spirit effect monster. Who would have thunk? All the text. Exosister Armament. Not bad. It's our hollow. Amazonist Augusta. So I have a friend, Michael, who has built a deck around Amazonas. So I don't know. I could probably offer this to him as a as a potential upgrade because I don't think that his copy is an ultra. Uh oh, okay, well. <laughs> Oops. Just barely lost it. Uh, Magicor Warrior of the Relics. <laughs> uh, is this part? Yeah, I was about to say. I think this guy's part of Adventure. Weird. Uh, but that's really good. Dynamorphia uh, Therizia. So this card has gone down significantly in price because of the reprints. And I thank them for that because Dynamorphia was very unnecessarily expensive. I guess just because it was kind of like relegated to one set. But um, yeah, I'm very glad to go ahead and have this too. I think this is another one that people tend to run a, one of. Put Boobacris. I mean, it's a lady. I don't, I'm not really. Anyways, uh, Illusion of Chaos. I think that's another good one. Okay, Illusion of Chaos isn't quite as good as, um, as some of the other stuff uh, I've pulled so far. Because actually, Rite of Aramisir is pretty high up there, too. But, I mean, Illusion of Chaos, definitely still a good card that a lot of people really like to play and is part of Dark Magicians, so very good. That's not posting a Discord announcement a stream? Did I not? Really? Wait, did I not? Oh my god, You, you I know exactly what it was. I know exactly what happened. I got distracted. And again, th this is nobody's fault but myself. But Avatar came in and said that uh, my mic quality was a little a little funky. So I started working on that for the first little bit of stream. And then I uh, got into the packs. So thank you for letting me know that. I'm sorry that it was, it only took 30 minutes of stream. <laughs> Before anybody cared to tell me. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Empress. Hopefully you're having a good night tonight. <laughs> I really appreciate you letting me know. Uh, Dynamorphia Shell again. Hey. Lots of uh, telltale signs for the Dynamorphia set here. Got a wonderful stream notification for a Born or Blur stream. So glad I could join stream about the start. Shush. Shush, shush, shush. I pulled you an Amazonas card, Michael. And it's actually not this one. It was a it was an ultra rare Augusta. If you if you wanna, I'll probably just give it to you, TBH. Uh Libromancer Doom Broker. Also, I may indeed guilt the gear. Are you alive in the NNN challenge, my friend? Yes, I, I am. Not a, uh, 
Not a difficult challenge for a man of my caliber. Good night, my broski. Going to sleep. Yo, take care. Do it. Well, no, you can't really say that there. <laughs> take care. Do hope you have yourself a good night. Have a good uh, day tomorrow, too. Hopefully you enjoy your weekend. Well, you go. New film location angle. Uh, yes, I had to get a new angle to set up for my uh, bad camera to film me and my good camera to film the cards. My good camera. <laughs> Bog W, bro. We always getting these W's out here. I mean, again, uh, the out of the packs, like I, I've gotten stuff that I will actually use out of these 10s. Exosister Vadis. And that Scareclaw Balloon. And I mean, like, the reprinted sets, you know, there's always something that you're probably going to come across, especially if it's, like, a staple that a lot of people use. Um, but all in all, like, I, I tend to feel like my luck with Yu-Gi-Oh! packs as of late has been pretty dog water. Some, some might also say weak sauce. But these uh these packs have been good to me so far. Got a good card to to resell, which I mean I know is not the point of pulling packs and stuff like this, right? But uh definitely kind of gets some money flow back so that way I can just pour it into more, because you know I am. Alright, and last pack magic for Yu-Gi-Oh! Fall of the night. You have ice jade erosion. Scareclaw Acro. Wait, did I post it on Twitter? I think I yes I did. <laughs> like I went through all of that on the like the Discord stuff and I'm like, did I not do this either? Terrors in the Hidden City. Dynamorphia Alert, another Dynamorphia card, which again I have plenty of these, but you know what? I'll take it. Amazonas Secret Arts. Amazonist Golden Whip Master, more Amazon stuff. Maybe we're gonna get one in here. Another Amazonist card. Branded Beast. Oh, we're going back to where we started now with a with a rare. Laughing Puffin. That's a cute little guy. Looks like a wing beast support. Can't say I've come across this one before, but pretty cool hollow. All right, and for our ultras, we have Naturia Blessing. Naturia getting a super big overhaul of these past couple sets. Got the Dragon Lion Man. So got a Flower Mane. Illegal Knight. This is one of the funniest cards ever. I think he's also like one of the better cards in the actual adventure package too. Yo, Pixie Curb Storm, I do appreciate that. I'll do my hand stretches as soon as I'm done with these packs because we'll have to move into uh, Pokemon anyways. But hopefully you had a good day so far, having a good night. And uh, hopefully you got some cool plans for the weekend. Nick yourself bad while shaving. Haven't done that in a hot minute. Ooh, yeah, big oof. Okay, that's another card I needed. Thank the Lord. Man, okay, these tens have actually gotten me a lot of good stuff out of them. Uh, Ariana, the Labyrinth Servant. So this is one of your main engine pieces when playing Labyrinth. This is your three of. You just run a whole bunch because it's one of your best searches. Um, and it's in the pretty beautiful secret rare. It's very, very reflective. So I am, I'm very happy with that. Um, if I did want to, you know, finish building the deck, I'll need more. But one will definitely get me partway there. And Flow Underies and the Advent of Adventure. I hate this deck. <laughs> It's a, it's a bunch of like cute birds, but then they just end up being uh, floodgate central and they play on your turn and it's very frustrating. But it is what it is. That's another secret. So to round out the pack, we have a labyrinth setup. I actually don't know if I have this card. I don't recognize this. This may have been in a future set. Noble Knight Kustanen. Exosister Returnia. Ninjutsu Art Notebook of Mystery. Definitely a mouthful there. Dynamorphia Reversion. And the last card, I believe, is a Zombie Reborn. I think that's Grafa in the background. 
Or is that like the synchro that they use? I don't know. Anyways. So overall, honestly, uh, really good. Because um, we got an actual big pull, which was uh, the Bestial Druis Worm. Second most expensive card in the set. Which, I mean, you know, again, we're not... The, we're not getting stocks, right? We're not we're not going super up after getting that. But that does actually uh, get me a good bit back uh, if I decide to sell, which I probably will. I really don't have a reason to uh, to stick onto it unless I decide to use it as a trade. So I'm just getting out, going through my personal. Uh, my personal good pulls. So we're going to start with a kind of like the generic card that came in the set, but still pretty good. Uh, is Muckraker from the Underworld. Just a very good link monster. Good effect, uh, especially if you're going to play Fiends, which is Labyrinth. So good card there. We go into Dynamorphia. Got Dynamorphia Stealth Burgia. Uh, again, I do think I have this card already, but I may not have all the copies I wanted. So again, still good pull for me. Dynamorphia Thursia, a very, very difficult card to pull um, from the original set, but you know, it was reprinted here and is a lot easier to come by. So very glad that I pulled one for myself here. Ariana the Labyrinth Servant, uh, very good main card in the Labyrinth deck. You want to run three of them. So another good card. And then the very pretty lady, uh, lovely Labyrinth of the Silver Castle. And I'm pretty sure you only need one of her. So very, very, very happy with these tens. I don't know if I'd uh, buy any more because the rarity collection is just like so ridiculously good. I'm just, I'm very much considering buying a full booster box of that. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I do I do think that that is a very, very good set. And it's, it's an exciting set, too, because it comes with, like, a bunch of uh, just interesting rarities. Like, you pretty much don't get anything under a uh, under a hollow in that set, I'm almost certain. And then you have a chance of getting some really, uh, well, some exclusive rarities that were really only in Japan for a while. So if you probably see me opening stuff next month, that may be what it is, because... That set is really cool. Um, but still got one more thing left. We're going to open the night. Uh, let me go ahead and change the category since we are going to Pokemon. And I will be opening an ETB of 151. I'm going to have to get my... Uh, on trading card game, Pulzard. Oh, I'll just get a God Pack. Easy. Get a God Pack. Pull the the full line for Zard. Easy pickings for me. <laughs> no. And again, um, so 151 is a good set. I'm not gonna deny. It. I'm just not a Gen One lover though. Uh, in I'm I'm a person who actually played uh a lot of um Leaf Green and Fire Red when I was younger. So it was, it's a generation I am pretty familiar with just from being when I was young. But um, Gen 3 still is going to be my always and forever. I love that generation so much. And even uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire still really, really like. So we'll go through what we kind of got in the box here. Uh, we get our Snorlax promo, which is pretty neat. It's a little like... Yeah, it's it's not uh not the most uh yeah just a little bit curved that'll buff out I'm sure uh, get a bunch of energies get our sleeves which these are nice sleeves but I just don't know what deck I'd want to use those for uh, we have a code card that I'm probably just gonna leave in there. Uh, we have some markers for burn and poison. Speaking of markers, we also have dice markers for the standard damage counters. And then we have our packs. Our delicious packs. I believe it's nine. Yes, I can count. We have nine packs. 
before we get into that though. Please guys, stay hydrated. I do very much recommend it. I usually recommend water just because, you know, that's what was good for you. It is the most you will get from hydration, but, uh, you know, tea or juice will also suffice. Just getting something nice for yourself, sweetie. Alright, first pack. Not sure if I should call it first pack magic, but first pack of Pokemon 151. We're opening the night. Uh, I need to move these cards out of the way just in case I do actually need the top loader and sleeve. Oh, I guess I could have used the sleeves from 151 if I got any big pulls, but you know what I mean. Just keeping stuff available. Because I do think we'll get at least one pull from here, even if it's just like a uh, 1v card and then one uh, illustrator. All right. Uh, I will do the card trick. Go ahead and guess the energy. I am going to guess that it is a dark energy. It is a hollow water energy. I, I seem to have really good luck with the uh, with the hollow energies. I'm not sure why. They're very nice. Going into Squirtle. Lickitung. Uh, I guess I should put that uh, kind of under the hits, that hollow energy. Lickitung. PG. It's hard to actually keep my hand right now because the packs that I have to the side are actually <laughs> are just a little high. Right on. Nidorino. Rigid Band. Reverse Royal Farfetched. I honestly don't know if I pulled this card in my first ETB, so I'm pretty pretty cool with that. Reverse Foil Cadabra. And for our first rare of the night, we have a Kabutops Hollow. So his uh, ability, Ancient Way, is super interesting. The only difficult part is, is like, I'm not really sure how you would get this Pokemon out. Because uh, Stage 2 Pokemon are already like a pretty big investment, and uh, you have to go from a fossil to this. So... I believe, like, what is it? Uh, Ore Beetle has an ability where it's like you can basically cheat out a bunch of stage two Pokemon, so maybe that would be what you do. Um, either way, it's an interesting card. It gives four times weakness. Okay, okay, pack number two. I was about to say, I should be putting this in the garbage can that's literally right next to me. Alright, guessing the energy, I'm going to guess that it is a electric energy. It is a fire, no! Almost always guess fire. Uh, yeah, I can put this here. Execute. Good old eggs. The fairy. Very, very cute. Machop. Also, sorry if this music is putting people to sleep right now. <laughs> Definitely a very, very chill one. Porygon. Got Mr. Trio, Trio, Trio. The Fable. Tentacruel. Reverse Royal Arcanine. That's my dude, new type Arcanine's favorite Pokemon. Behind that, we have a Reverse Royal Tangela. Reaching for the berries, Mr. Wiggly Woo. And behind that, our rare is a. Hollow Ditto! I don't think I have this one yet either. That's good for the collection. 
So I guess he's just among a bunch of rocks. Like, he kind of looks like he's in a garbage dump. Anyway, he, he looks happy nonetheless. His attack is also splup. Just read that. I'm sure that nobody uses it for that purpose. But if you wanted to BM with a ditto, you could attack with splup. It's weird that it says once during your first turn. So I guess that's literally just like you have to pull it turn one or else it's it's just it only can splup. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'm going to guess for this energy. I'm gonna guess electric again. Hollow foil metal energy. I haven't kept up with actually what hollow foils I have, but you know what? Again, I'm going to keep taking it. That is a, another one in the pile. Paris. Voltorb going to explode. Grammy. Sand true. God, it is always a habit of me to, like, look over at the camera just to make sure that things are still on screen. <laughs> Rigid Band. Executor up. Graveler. I think the next one is a first reverse. Yes, it is Dragonair. Reverse foil is Magma. Oh, I didn't even know that his uh his second attack uh, combos with uh, Electabuzz. It's always interesting how they kind of like link those two characters. And of course, for all rare, we have a Hollow Mewtwo. I don't think I have this card either. Not too bad. So we've gotten a bunch of hollow energies, but no, uh, no actual, like, I guess, big pulls yet. So still hoping, holding out hope for one of those. This is pack number four. So we're not quite halfway through yet, but. Uh, I'm going to guess Psychic Energy this time. Very wrong. It is a Fighting Energy. Voltorb. Another Krabby. This is Cookie Cookie. Sandra. Seal. Sleepy little guy. Richard Ben, oh my god, how many of these am I going to get? I do not think that this card is very good either, so that, that's kind of lame. I know that there are a whole bunch of other, like, trainers in this set. Graveler. Oh, we're in, uh, freaking, what is this, Zelda Jazz now? Where am I? On the screen. There we go. Oh, uh, Nintendo Jazz Covers. All right. We'll keep it. Keep it rolling. Uh, protective goggles. Going into reverse foil Lapras. Reverse foil Tauros. It is so uncanny, like how realistic they made this Tauros look. And I think it's specifically the nostrils. I know my camera's not good enough for that, but like. The, the shape and face of this and the nostrils of that Tauros look a little too real. <laughs> and for our rare, we have a Hollow Gyarados. I do think I pulled this one when I pulled 151 previously.
All right, pack number five. So now we are actually halfway through. Um, I'm gonna guess grass. It is not, it is steel. Josh may have gotten that because his default go-to is usually steel. I'm going into seal. Close enough. Doduo? What a weird angle. Interesting though. Tentacool? Not my boy Toad School, but yeah. still appreciate the man. Got me through some Pokemon games before. Rattata? Our canine. And we have Kingler. I don't think he says cookie anymore. I don't know what he says. I think he just goes. <laughs> Guts head. Uh, I believe the next one is. No, not the reverse foil. Uh, it is Snorlax. And then we have a reverse foil Kakuna. After that, it will be Polyrath, Reverse Foil. And for our rare list pack, we have a Dodrio, Hollow. I'm getting scared, y'all. I think, uh, I think this must be loaded in the back of the packs. I hope. Because all I've gotten are hollow energy so far, and if that's all I get from the CTB, that's going to be a little upsetting. I'll just be a little mad, Sag. Rear weighted gotta be. Yeah, after you said freaking, oh yeah, starting well. Just you jinx me. <laughs> I know pull rates in the set are not that hard. That's why, that's mainly why I'm surprised. Uh, I'm going to guess that this is a water. It is not. It is a fighting and it is a hollow energy again. Oh my God. Please tell me that all of my hits were not replaced with hollow energies. <laughs> Please, for the love of God, tell me that. Ugh. Doduo. Tentacruel. Or cool. I think I said cool there by accident. One stage too late. Okay, this is looking very similar to the other pack. Rattata. Squirtle. All right, we're breaking it up. Our canine. I believe that was the same, though. So Squirtle had to, to break the streak there. Tentacruel. Was there after all? Snorlax. Why do I feel like there was an extra card in this bag? Marowak. I don't think I've actually pulled this card either. So good for the click, Sean. Weedle. Weedle, weedle, weedle. And for a rare, we have a Flareon. Do love Flareon. But I think I already pulled them, so. And I'm also super jealous because he's still not very playable. Flareon in both the uh, in both VGC, so like the actual Pokemon games, and in TCG, never really been good. He's never had an opportunity to shine, and uh, that makes me sad because the ones that I feel like, well, no, the the number one evolution you see the most, I'm almost certain, is is Sylveon because of Pixelate. I think they, that Sylveon still has that hidden ability. I don't think they removed that. All right. Uh, second to last pack. We have a fire energy. No, just a dark. Dark energy. Going into Squirtle. Lick a tongue. Okay, this is looking a lot like the first pack. Then not this is looking a lot like the first pack. 
I think this is the first pack, guys. Pidgey. Sandslash? I don't think we got a Sandslash the first time. Maybe we did. Haunter. Frickin' Komiya doing the R of the entire Haunter line, or the entire, like, Ghastly line, Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar is so cool, man. He's such a, he's such a unique artist. And I think that in the beginning, his, his stuff was really jarring, but when they gave him more suitable Pokemon to, like, to, like, make his designs around, it's so, so interesting. I really like his style. Golduck. Erica's Invitation. I actually don't think I've pulled this yet either, so that's good. Hi, Gameron. New camera angle era. Well, only for this, because we need to get the, uh, I needed to have my good camera available for the cards, and I needed my bad camera again for just my face, since it's, it's far enough away that it doesn't have to be super high res. Erica's Invitation. Reversal Helix Fossil. That's... <laughs> and for our rare, we have a... Okay, finally something. Venusaur EX. There we go. Okay. I was getting a little worried there, but we finally came across something. Uh, again, I don't think I've pulled the Venusaur EX, so that's that's another one for the collection. I'm not sure that I'd build a deck around it. Well, I mean, it kind of fits well for my. Um, it does fit semi. All right, fit semi well for my uh, Butterfree deck that I have. The only problem is, is like, it's a stage three or a stage two, so I would definitely have to commit a lot of resources to get there. Pasties. All right, next to last pack. What's it gonna be, chat? I'd be so mad right now if I had this. If I bought the CTP, pa pause, hold, hold in chat, all capitalized, hold. It could we could have something. <laughs> Doing good. How are you? Cut himself shaving. Yup, he sure did. Yo, Audrey, how's it going? Hopefully you're doing well. You're unfortunately a little bit towards the end of the uh, of the pack openings. We're actually getting uh, very, very close. We're in the next last pack of Pokemon, and we have not pulled a lot, which is really sad. But th this I, this ETB has to be backloaded. They saved the best for last. I, I, I have to believe that in my heart of hearts. Otherwise, I will be sad. <laughs> Basic energy. This is just electric. No, no hollow foil. Like a tongue. Venomat. Pidgey. Wow. Okay, they really were able to like print a lot of these cards in the same exact order. Polyworld. We love cleaning. Hooray! Sand slash. Nidorino. Gold Duck. And I believe this is our reverses next. Reverse Foil Firo. I don't think I have this card yet, so another good one for the click shown. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll take it. Little bitty Caterpie. All art or illustration rare. The Caterpie in the Butterfree line is definitely one of my favorite bug types. Super, super, super good. It's an ETB with cake. Uh, let's hope that the that the icing on top is uh, also still there. <laughs> and but for a rare, gr granted, this could be a this could be a double hitter. For a rare, we have a B drill. <laughs> It doesn't even, that doesn't evolve. Pokemon Company, you messed up. These two things are not the same. No, no, no. Those aren't the same. 
Look, I'll, I'll have a real Pokemon Master teach you. All right. I would say that Sully's B drill, but I'm not Mr. Fire Dragon, so. I love Wurmple. Yeah, it's, yeah, I love Wurmple too. Proceeds to forget him in the Gen 3, uh, Sporkle. <laughs> All right, last pack magic chat. Again, I do not have the squishy men. Do not have the, the, um, I do not have the stress ball luck to, to bring forth. You know what? Maybe that's why this ETB so far has just been okay. Did not have my good luck charms with me. Don't worry, I couldn't spell beautifully. That's fair. Okay. Uh, for last pack, I'm going to guess it is a fire energy. It is not. It is a grass. <laughs> Starting off super good. We got Poliwhirl. Kakuna. Poliwag, little guy. Ponyta. Pinsir, okay. I don't know that I have Pinsir, so it's a good one. I think it's because it's an uncommon. Bill's transfer, oh my gosh, finally another trainer, dude. <laughs> it took me so long to, to find something else other than the freaking uh whatever band. Golbat. Looking like his uh he's, he's seen some better days, but that's fine. Uh I think the reverse foil is next. Yes, reverse foil nup top. I mean Arsh. Sitting in a potted plant. For our reverse, our last chance for another illustration rare, we have a Vaporeon, which is a rare. Does that mean we could get a big hitter behind this? So for our final card of the 151 ETB Born Baller box opening, we have a Okay, alright. Actual full art wiggly tough EX. I've lost fa fair. <laughs> fair. <laughs> you know, not the not the biggest hit in in uh in the set, but all things considered, pretty good full art. I love Clefable. Yo, same. It's good. It's good that we just pulled one. <laughs> Expanding body is an interesting ability, though. It says uh, if it has special energy attacks, it gets plus a hundred HP. That's a freaking big guy. Um. And then it allows you to do some extra damage if you play to support the card this turn. So, pretty interesting. Um, so, uh, again, I'll be honest. I really don't have any chase cards for this set. Um, probably the starters, right, are the ones that I kind of want, like, the uh, illustration rares of the most. Which, I mean, I feel like everybody does. Um, but, you know, this is all, this is all right. Getting... Venusaur EX, Caterpie Illustration Rare, and Wigglytuff EX. Not too terrible of pulls. And then we, I, I don't know if this was like the, the balancer or whatever, but we also managed to get three, oh, excuse me, three holographic energies here. I'm not sure why I tend to have this much luck with the energies. I have actually, like, I've pulled a bunch of these already, and I've only opened this this ETB and a previous one, and I'm pretty sure I have six. Six hollows. So, <laughs> that's got to count for something, right? But uh, that is it for the night. I actually do not have anything else to open. Um, but uh, I still hope y'all enjoyed the stream and the pack openings. Uh, again, pro Pokemon... A little bit on the weaker side because there could have been some cooler stuff that we could have come across but i'd say that overall still fun night um next yeah next month we're probably going to be doing paradox rift and um and the rarity collection 
So I would really recommend that one. I know 151 probably people are a little bit higher on than Paradox Rift, but um, I think that that set's really, really cool, especially because it focuses a lot on the um, on the Paradox Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. And then the Rarity Collection is just super, super cool. Has a bunch of staples a, a part of it, and you just get some really shiny cardboard. That's what we all love is shiny cardboard. So uh, hopefully you guys look forward to that too. That's basically what I intend to do next month, but I'll actually have to get that since most of those things literally just came out. I think Paradox Rift came out yesterday or maybe today. I think it was officially today. So, but I do appreciate y'all coming by. Let me go ahead and see if I have any special thank yous to hit somebody with. I believe I do because I got some good follows tonight from some very gracious people. I do very much appreciate it. Today officially. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So yeah, I did get a follow from Hinke Leet 420 Do appreciate you. Thank you to Evil Mojito for the follow, and thank you to Kale850 for the follow. Uh, I really don't know how y'all found my stream, but hey, I really appreciate it. Hopefully you didn't enjoy the pack openings. Uh, if you are curious, I do not normally open packs. It's usually a once a month thing. Um, so it will be next month before we probably see any of that, unless I didn't just I just get like super eager to open something, uh, which the rarity collection is really up there, but more cost effective to just save the content. So um, that's probably what'll happen. Uh, but if you are actually interested in card games, specifically Yu-Gi-Oh, I am playing Nightmare Trobador as my game playthrough as of right now. Uh, that'll come back on Monday since uh, our TCG streams are just tend to be nice, short, chill stream. Nothing too crazy and specific, uh, unless we get some super big hits, which nothing super big tonight, but it doesn't always got to be that way. Uh, and I'll probably will be opening cards tomorrow, not on stream, but just with some buds. Uh, if we can find some Paradox Rift, so that could be cool. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it quits for the night. Um, I don't think that there's anybody for me to raid. Uh, I know that Fire Dragon was actually opening some Paradox Rift, but I think he may have finished for the night. Yes, he did. If he was still streaming, I definitely would have raided him, so that way y'all could have uh, seen some of that. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, to uh, call it quits in the stream, and hopefully uh, y'all have fun with whatever else you got planned to do in the night. If you're playing games or just relaxing, hopefully you have a good time doing that. Um... As for regular thank yous, once again, I'm going to give shout outs to um, Hinke, Evil Mojito, and Kale for coming by. I do really appreciate y'all. Hopefully, if you're lurking, you enjoyed that lurk. Uh, thank you to Josh for coming by. Thank you to Audrey for coming by. Thank you to Yellow for coming by. Thank you to Chris for coming by. Thank you to Michael for coming by. Thank you to Empress for coming by. Um, thank you to uh, Pixie Curbstorm for coming by. Again, hopefully, y'all all had a very good night and enjoyed the stream. And thank you to Avatar for coming by as well. And I believe that's it. <laughs> I think so. Uh, I'm doing neither games nor relaxing. Yeah, you're probably doing art and stressing, so. But uh, uh, take care, everybody. I do really appreciate y'all coming by once again. Hopefully I'll see you ag again on Monday when we get into some Yu-Gi-Oh! Nightmare Trobador. Uh, if I... Uh, did forget to thank you. I do very much apologize. Hopefully you still enjoyed streaming. If you were lurking, hopefully you enjoyed that lurk. And I hope everybody is having a fantastic night with Dre, wherever you may be. I will be a stream on the Monday of next week, and I'll be doing some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Nightmare Trobador. Um, it is old era Yu-Gi-Oh! if that interests you at all. Uh, and it's on the DS, so also got that very old, well, not very old school, you know, you know what I mean. But it does have old school flair at this point. Um, and I mean, again... O old Yu-Gi-Oh is definitely a thing to behold, and we def we learned that last stream. So hopefully, if that sounds interesting, y'all, you come by for that too. Uh, but besides that, I have nothing else to say. I hope you guys have yourself a good rest of your night. If you're going to bed, please enjoy the rest of your night. Get a good night's rest and have a good day tomorrow. But if you're not going to bed, just relax or do whatever else. And until I see y'all next time, bye bye.